All right, welcome to my channel. So the first thing that you need to know before you start watching my videos is the purpose of this channel is for education and entertainment, mostly education with some entertainment and uh, mostly for my students really. It's, a, it's an opportunity for me to showcase my algorithm and for my students to, to see it working and me to be able to talk about the trades and why I'm taking the trades and things like that. This is not a channel where I'll be showing you that I'm making millions of dollars. So family rules, you won't be seeing that. Some traders out there want to put their stuff out. I don't even know why they do that. Like, And social media in a public sphere, hey, look at me. I made 20000 today, 50000 today, you know, all that stuff. That will not happen on this channel. The most you'll see me making here is anywhere from 50 bucks to 1000 bucks in a day would be the most once we get to that level of scaling. And then I'll reset and we'll be looking at 50 bucks, and we'll be scaling back to you know, 1000 a, a day or so. Um, and we'll just keep resetting that scaling. But family rules will not be showing you on this uh, my social media that I'm making tons of money. Second thing is I'm trading with Thinkorswim. That's my platform that you see here on the screen. So you got my two windows um, on futures trading. Same thing will be Thinkorswim. Um, so you'll see that I trade futures and the equities market with these videos. I trade based off of my algorithm, the simple switch algorithm, and it's got different settings. Same algo, but different settings for futures market for equities market and different types of uh, trading. It's got different settings for it. So I'll be trading off of that. Links below if you're interested in learning more about the algo. All the education over there is free, um, as well as the trading log that you'll see. You can get the link below, which will give you that log. Um, so you can um, go over there and explore all that stuff. So when you're looking at my screen, okay, and when you're looking at my screen, you'll see these uh, the chart markups and you'll see yellow. Wherever I put yellow is an entry. So when it's yellow like this, it's the algo um, ideal entry. And then you may see a yellow like this, and that is where I actually got in, and it'll be touching the candle that I got in on, and then the location. Red are my stops, green are my targets. And then if you wanna learn how the algo works, so you can better understand what I'm doing, when I'm doing my trades over at the link below. You can go over there and learn all about the algo. It's completely free for that whole education. It's free from, to learn about my trading plan, my strategy, everything that I teach about trading is free over there. Only thing that costs money is if you decided to buy the algo, then that would cost money. But you can apply a lot of the stuff that I teach over there, including my strategy and trading plan to your own strategies and, uh, and help maybe improve your game. So all that is definitely free. I don't charge for any of that education, uh, only the algo if that's something you decided to uh, add to your list. So then sometimes you'll see on here my, me doing experiments, um, which I'm going to try to do another one later on this year when I get a little more time. Um, but I love to do trading experiments. We blow up accounts, um, but we do it uh, in the purpose of education, showing you that certain trading techniques or strategies sometimes uh, just don't work. And uh, we, we play with some different concepts and uh, blow up accounts, real accounts, small accounts, but still real accounts. And you'll also see some small accounts as well like when we do offshore brokers and things like that. So, and then uh, of course, educational videos I'll be putting out as well. So there's a lot of different content here. So if you can give me the like, hit, hit the like button. That would help me a lot with the YouTube. And uh, if you subscribe and hit that bell icon, you can be notified whenever I upload uh, new content. And the last thing, but probably the most important thing is trading is very risky. Do not place a trade based on what you see here or whatever I say. I'm not telling you what to do. Um, if it sounds like I'm telling you what to do, it's me just thinking out loud. And you know, most traders will lose all of their money. I am strictly speculating. I do not have a crystal ball. So, you know, I'm not a financial advisor or anything like that. So please do not take financial advice from me. This is uh, strictly to talk about how I trade, to teach about how I do things and for your entertainment. All right, so now the legal stuff is out of the way. Let's get into today's trades. All right, good morning, everybody. It's August 12th, so here we are with JD. I didn't get the recording going in time, but um, we have our switch back right here, so we jumped in short, and uh, we jumped in a little heavy. I didn't have my glasses on either, and I thought that was a thousand shares. And it's a premium trade today. We'll show you the we'll show you the last couple days here at the end. Um, but I jumped in with uh, a thousand shares, so um, yeah, that's where we're at. Or I thought I jumped in with a thousand. We're actually with 1,600. So. And we're in the red right now. So once we get into the green, I may look to um, reduce some risk. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it's moving. 
All right. So typical JD, the last week, like what has happened with this ticker? The, of course, you know, it's trading awesome for like, uh, all year. And then I'm like, oh, I'm just going to focus on JD and do this new thing. And then it just does this every day. So, uh, you know, I sold off. Uh, sorry, I was in a meeting, so I couldn't uh, talk about it. But I sold off uh, a chunk of my shares because, um, right, what do we got here? Uh, we are position. Are we out of our position? Did I sell off everything? JD, I sold off all of my shares. All right, cool. So in Thinkorswim, when you um, type in your share size here, you have to hit enter or else it's whatever it used to be in that box. Um, so apparently I sold all my shares for a $91 loss, which is actually working out good because I sold it down around here and it's still going up. So $91 loss, you know, 250 risk reward. I'm, I'm just going to stay out of this trade. It looks like it's a consolidation and it may be there the rest of the day. It may even drift back higher towards this top of the channel. So we'll just be out. Call it a loss, uh, $91. Um, all good. See, I was in a meeting and I was trying to make that happen. I didn't hit enter. Uh, focus, traders. You got to be focused. But uh, yeah, so all good. Uh, the biggest thing is preserving capital. So let's go put that in the log and talk about that. Okay, so real quick, before we jump over to the log, though, um, so right here, we had JD, right? We had our switch, and then we had our switch back, switch back before 1230, so I'm looking for, and then we came down, we started to consolidate right here, so we got this really nice consolidation, um, and we see this uh, support area that keeps getting hit, keeps getting hit, major tug of war that's taking place right through here, indecision is happening with these candles. So there's a big battle on longs and shorts trying to uh, see who's going to win that, that battle. And it's really tight, almost like if they're both pulling the rope and nobody's moving. So once this got moving, I would expect that uh, to break. And the psychology of this would be, you know, your shorts might that are waiting to short may start to jump in soon, soon after a break somewhere down in this area. And longs that are looking for this to go higher may get out of their position because it's breaking down. So that's what I would expect to see in this area as a normal type of play from the psychology standpoint. But it's also possible that somebody tries to push this over the edge to create liquidity to then have a bunch of shares to, uh, to purchase. What I mean by that is if I want to go long on this and I want to buy so many shares that the volume doesn't really support the amount of shares I want to buy without driving the price up, I need it to go down. I need a lot of shorts to get in and then I can buy their shares and then keep everything pretty much stable and get the trade that I want. So um, that's what I mean by liquidity play. So there's a lot of different aspects that could be at play here. There's also this area right here where we see um, all this uh, resistance, right? Not a lot of resistance, but there's some resistance in this, this area. I don't think resistance is a number or support. I think it's an area. And we see that in this area. And right near the top of these candles where there was resistance, this came back down. So did it come back down to test what was once resistance to become now support? Or is it uh, doing the opposite where it breaks here and it's going back up? This was once support. So now it breaks. Now it's coming back up, testing that support area that should now become resistance, right? What's happening there? So on a technical side, it's funny because you can listen to traders. Once the trade is fully played out, they'll pick one of those and tell you that that's what they saw and that's why they made the trade, right? There's so many... Technical analysis can be so difficult, but it can also help out in letting you know that the trade action that you're seeing is uh, is normal or is it abnormal, you know? So anyway, so there's a couple different things that could be happening there. And when I, you know, that's just, you know, then we can look at trend lines and all that stuff. So when I say all that, that there's a bunch of different stuff that's kind of open in there. It's like, what is it? That tells me that once it's got here and it broke back up, I almost wanted to just take profit here, but is it just is it coming up to retest before a rollover? But once it started to break back inside of this uh, channel that's right here, right? We got back inside of that channel. Um, it's uh, to me, it's fake. It's a false breakout or breakdown, and now we're going back into the consolidation zone, and there's too much unknown there. So I'd rather just get out, preserve my capital. Um, based on the algo, it's still expecting it to come back and hit this. But we're almost at the end of the day, and I just don't know that we have enough time left. You know, if we had like another four hours left, I would just let this trade ride. But uh, we don't. We only got like an hour left, so not even. And I just don't see that being enough time to overcome what's happening to get into this zone. And it could. And at the end of the day, trade volume could be light. There could be traders actually looking to jump into this law. There's all kinds of coulda, woulda, shouldas at the end of the day. 
So there could be, you know, it's just really difficult to, to, to manage what might end up happening here. So better to be out, preserve capital. So let's go look at the log. All right, so here's today. JD, man, it's just been rough since we started. It's $94, right? So $94. We're going to go look at the scaling ladder real quick. So scaling ladder, you know, because I jumped out of that, we still haven't lost another bar. So had I lost a bunch of bars, then I'm going to be really far from trying to get, get into my $500 zone. I'd rather take a bunch of little losers and not really lose any bars. Um, as long as, you know, the thing is, if I get out just because I'm afraid and then I miss out on winners, then I don't have the winners to pay for the losers and I blow up my account. So my, if I'm getting out early, it's got to be very strategic and um, very purposeful with some probability of behind the decision to, to be able to do that, to get out early or else it doesn't make any sense. Because like I said, if it ends up being a winner, then I don't have the winner to pay for losers. And then all of a sudden my strategy becomes a losing one. But I think today was a good move, preserve capital. So we're still right here, one trade, we color this bar in and, uh, and then we're looking for a couple more trades and we'll be being colored in for the $500 zone and then we'll be off to the races. So I think that'll make sense. So I'm gonna show you, go back to the chart real quick. Actually, we'll look at the dashboard. So dashboard, here we are in the month um, of August. Oh, it didn't save it. So we had, um, hmm, I'm going to have to go see what happened. There was a swing trade that closed uh, yesterday or today? Yesterday? Um, so yesterday, the day before. So I got to go back and put that in. I don't know why that didn't save it. All right. So anyway, so I must have forgot to hit save when I close this. So I'll put that back in. But this month actually looks better than this. We're definitely green on the month because we had some nice swings close out. And uh, I'll put those in and show those to you tomorrow or the next day. I'm not sure if I'll be trading tomorrow, actually, traders. I might have to see you on Monday. Yeah, today's Thursday. Tomorrow I will not be trading. So uh, what a bummer. But we'll be green on the week uh, regardless, which is nice. And we did have the swing trades, which is awesome. But let's go look at something in the chart real quick and need to show you. All right, so you can see what this trade action looks like, right? This huge move up and then just this flat line. All right, so look at that. And then we have this over here. So we have our switch, our switch back, and then slide right away. So this is typically what I see when um, when JD is going to be a winner, not this uh, switch and then this thing that happens towards the end of the day. So once this starts happening, a lot of things can change, traders. Like, you know, especially like, you know, I trade on my algo and there's a set of conditions that it's looking for. And those set of conditions are present right here for a short. So that's what I'm getting in short. Uh, right here, if um, if those conditions were met and this was a long play, which they're not met here, but if they were and it was a long play, then, you know, somewhere in here, conditions are changing. It may not be a short yet, but it may not be a long either. So the probability of success, the further out this goes, gets lower and lower and lower. But right, right in the first few candles, the first four or five candles is your highest probability of success when trading with my algo. After that, probability starts to get reduced big time. Doesn't mean it won't be successful. It just gets reduced big time. Like we had a trade a few weeks ago on CVS that I closed out on because we we're doing this and we we're just barely in profit running the channel. I was like, you know what? I'm out. And I jumped out, which was emotion, an emotional exit. And then like four candles later, it went up, you know, five R. I could have had an epic day. But um, uh, I let my emotions get the best of me and I really just got impatient. And I should have just set it and forget it instead of just closing it. But it is what it is. So my exits have to be on a probability of success, not just emotion. But either way, the longer it goes out, the less likely it is for the trade to be successful. This is what I like to see right here. This is what I want. So if I don't get this and I start thinking about preserving capital and uh, what is what is going on, do I have time left in the day to even be, be successful? Can I still hit my targets? Like, what does that look like? Uh, those thoughts go through my mind. All right, everybody. So we'll see you on Monday. Won't be here Friday. Have an awesome weekend.